Welcome everybody to the Ink Scoundrel Patch Notes review for the new upcoming Wild Rift Patch 2.1b. That's right. You can catch it all here on the Ink Scoundrel YouTube channel where we are cracked and we are super Anyway, as you might be able to tell, I've got a new mixer and I'm having a little bit too much fun with it. Oh my god, god guys, I, I can, can literally do this all day. day and I can really just make myself sound really nice. <laughs> okay guys you've got to be expecting me to there we go i've reset it you guys have got to be expecting me to use this way too much over the next couple of weeks i am gonna be i'm gonna be using this one a lot i like the old school radio british voice should i do the entire patch notes review like this do you think no no i don't think i should um we're doing a patch notes review yes patch 2.1b is coming out welcome to the channel if you're new we are good at this game here i've got a bleep button as well you can, you can tell i'm gonna use that a lot oh so yes patch notes review uh, that's always a thing um i uh am a scoundrel if you don't know me i do wild rift content mainly educational uh i'm part of uh, a group of my friends who we all do like content together me hell's devil it's Stuart. we're all like friends and we all like to try and make content as much as possible so this is one of the things that i do regularly which is a patch notes review and in this patch notes review we basically look towards what could be good in the meta whether i agree with what's being nerfed and buffed uh, and we basically just do a bit of a discussion so if you like the content feel free to like subscribe and hit the bell and also thanks to g2a for sponsoring the channel g2a also wanted me to mention that this week they are running the g2a academy which is essentially a program to get into schools and teach school teachers about the benefits of playing games i'll put a link in the description for g2a academy down there as well uh, if you're interested in just seeing what it's about cool patch notes review i had a bit of an interesting day today guys i had to go into my nursery for a meeting um rupert apparently is a bit of a naughty boy and uh, i had to go and uh, talk a little bit about what he's doing at nursery basically i thought it was going to be worse than it was he just doesn't like joining in with like cooking activities and group activities he kind of just throws a tantrum and goes on the floor uh so you know just gotta try and work to make him a bit better but he's only two like he's gonna throw tantrums he's two right but you know we'll do, we'll do our best Oh, okay, right. Let's talk about the patch notes. Um, this is the patch where we're going to get Leona, uh, Diana, and Pantheon. So I'm going to move the patch notes over here so I can actually see what's going on. And have I messed it up on my OBS? Yes, I absolutely have. There we go. Cool. So I'm going to I'm gonna uh, kind of talk about the patch notes like this. And we're going to get Leona, Diana, and Pantheon. These are su super awesome champions. I'll be making a guide on them as soon as they come. Um, we're going to get the Path to the Ascension event, which I think is going to be a really cool, like, thematic storyline event as well. They also noticed right at the end here, they are keeping a lie on Katarina's initial low win rate. What I would say is that Katarina is a super hard champion to play properly, and her low win rate is much more likely to be associated with people not quite figuring out how to play her rather than her being underpowered. I would say her ultimate feels a little underwhelming, but I do think that Katarina in the right hands is a bit of a menace. So I, I'm glad that they're not making any sweeping initial changes to Katarina because I do think Katarina is a very hard champion to play properly. So this, in my opinion, is a really good thing. They're just trying to let people get used to playing Katarina and see if her win rate levels out a little bit, having her being kind of put into the put out there a bit more. Um, but yeah, I think Katarina's ult's a little underwhelming, but that's it. Like I think realistically, people will get used to playing her. Plus, Katarina was never a big win rate champion on the PC League. Like she's very niche and she's not exactly like super um, good in every scenario because a lot of heavy CC is bad for her and we've got a heavy cc meta with things like alistair and malphite being quite common uh, you know i katarina just is one of those champions that will never be super good because the conditions for her to be good are quite specific um okay so leona uh for those of you that don't know about leona she is a support champion um she's tanky she's got lots of cc and stuns one of the best supports in the game uh, has remained relevant in in league pc especially in solo queue i think she's probably the best solo queue support in the game you see her played a lot at like the gold and platinum levels because she is very very good at like initiating team fights forcing engages in the bot lane so i'm expecting leona to see a lot of play diana bit of a niche champion diana um she can be played jungle mid baron lane she's got some flexibility she's basically an ap assassin but has a little bit more of like a a, a bruiser 
kind of feel to her. She's supposed to be an AP assassin, though. She jumps on someone, she does a lot of damage to them. Really kind of a melee AP mage, which we don't have a lot of them in Wild Rift. So this is nice to get one of them. Uh, and finally, Pantheon. Pantheon is, oh my word, like the most flexible champion in the game. He can play, be played jungle, mid, um, baron lane, and even support. Uh, and the thing about Pantheon that makes him really strong is that he's got this ability that can basically negate all damage and CC that comes his way for a short period of time. Um... So Pantheon, I think, is going to be super good. I can't wait to play him, especially in the support role. And I think he's a really easy champion to get to learn to play. So I think you'll you'll probably see uh, a lot of people pick Pantheon up because he's very, very good and he's super snowball-y and he can take over games pretty quickly. But he does fall off and I'm not exactly sure the current crop of itemization is going to allow him to kind of go further in the late game. But we'll see what happens once we get there. We're getting a load of patches. We're getting Barbecue Leona, Dark Valkyrie Diana, which is the one that you can see here, Full Metal Pantheon, Dragon Slayer Pantheon, which is one of my favorite Pantheon skins, Infernal Diana, and we're getting the Project skins. Uh, the Project skins for Ash, Leona, Vi, Yasuo, and Zed. And the Project skins are a super cool line. Definitely going to be picking myself up uh, Project Leona uh, on that. And we're going to get the Path of the Ascension. So let's get to the juicy bit, which is the champion nerfs and buffs. Ta-da! Welcome, everybody, to the champion nerfs and buffs the broadcast buying scoundrel uh i'm i'm sorry guys i you, you're gonna have to put up with me i literally just got this installed today uh <laughs> and i'm having too much fun with it i can even do this wait hello hello oh my god it's it's, it's reverby or even the echo okay yeah okay as you as you can tell or i could do like okay 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 um, yeah, so, <laughs> oh god, I'm having too much fun. Ah, so, Aurelian Soul. <laughs> you guys are just like, what the hell is he doing? Aurelian Soul's getting nerfed. Um, if there were a mid lane mage that was going to get nerfed, I probably wouldn't have selected Aurelian Soul, but he is pretty strong. So essentially, his passive, which is the damage that his stars do, they are getting nerfed and only really going to come back to the original level by the time that you get to level 15. So his his essentially his pretty much his entire game damage is coming down a little bit. His then celestial expansion which is his second ability is not getting nerfed at the first level um but uh, you know as the game goes on his celestial expansion damage is going to get nerfed as well. So uh, sorry it's going to get nerfed in the early game mid game and then it's going to get slightly buffed in the late game. So you're going to see a little bit of a mid-game lull in his second ability damage, but then he's going to be coming online a bit more in the late game. So, yeah. Basically, Aurelian Soul's mid-game is getting, getting hit pretty hard. Not massively hard, but pretty hard. And then, in, obviously, his, his ultimate's getting a cooldown nerf as well. So his ultimate's getting a 15-second cooldown nerf at the first level. They're really trying to make Aurelian Soul this late-game mage. He's not supposed to be super strong early and mid. He's supposed to be scaling. Um... This is this is damage that directly affects his capability in team fights though, and especially with the Leandri's nerf, this might be enough to kind of force him out. I don't think it's going to make him unplayable. I still think you'll see Aurelian Souls, but uh, you know, if I had the choice between an Aurelian Soul and an Ori Oriana, I might just be picking Oriana every time, especially because Oriana did, did not nerf again. again. Yeah, you can tell how I feel about that. Uh, but yes, uh, the, the Aurelian Soul nerfs here will affect his mid game, uh, especially those fights around the first and second dragons. They're going to be hit pretty hard. Uh, whether I need, think I need, whether, whether I think that needed to happen, mm, probably he was quite strong. Uh, but I think there were other mid lane mages that were more of a problem for me, uh, Oriana being one of them. Soraka, a bit weaker compared to her counterparts, giving him some more star power to help her shine as a healer and a silencer. So her Astral Infusion H uh, HP increase is going up from the second level in all the way up to the fourth. A little bit of a nice a, a nice boost, but um, I don't know if it's going to make her her meta. Like, the, the two second cooldown buff to Equinox is quite nice, especially you know when, when you're stacking that with Ability Haste. Um, is this going to make Soraka meta? Probably not. 10 HP on your second level. By the time you're at third Drake, you get, you've got 20 extra HP on the heal. 20 extra HP is probably not going to mean a massive amount. It's it's a nice buff, but it's probably not. You know, Soraka's not meta because she's not healing enough. Soraka's not meta because uh, she's particularly weak to the current crop of supports that are kind of like in the meta. Plus the fact that you always have to sacrifice your HP and things like Lulu and Janna, they don't need to sacrifice HP to give the ardent buff. And you know, Soraka's probably underplayed. I think Soraka probably has a place, but whilst Alistair is still super meta, you're probably not going to see a huge amount of Soraka. Um, but it's a nice buff and probably needed and it might make her a little bit more playable. Don't think it's going to make her like S tier or anything. 
Tristana is getting a small buff to her mana and her rocket jump. So she's getting a base mana per level buff and the slow on her rocket jump is going up. Is this going to make her meta? No, probably not. Um, Tristana, sorry, did I say Tristana or Soraka? But Tristana's got like a, a really lull in the, like a big lull in the mid game. Um, uh, so, I, you know, I think Tristana's in an okay spot. I think she could probably just do with maybe like a base AD buff. Maybe do with a little bit of extra damage on her explosive shot. Um, but I don't think this is going to make her meta. Like, a 0.5 second increase on her slow duration might be enough in the early game to make her, her laning all-in worth it. Like, we may see the fact that that 0.5 seconds increase will be important for her laning all-in potential. Because there are two points in the game in which Tristana's really strong. She's really strong in the laning phase where you can all-in with the rocket jump and the explosive charge. Or she's stronger in the late game once she's got the range. It's that mid-game that, really, that Tristana really struggles with. Um... If this 0.5 seconds transpires to allow her to go more all in more consistently, uh, you know, with the likes of an Alistair, for instance, or even with a Leona, then maybe we see Tristana pop up in the meta a bit more, like 0.5 seconds, especially um, at the first level. You know, it does give you 50% more time, even if it's only 0.5 a second. It does give you a 50% increase in time to, you know, apply damage and, and put pressure on the enemy AD. Uh, but I just think that her all in damage is quite lackluster right now. Uh, so I don't know if we'll see her, see her like shoot up in the meta just based on these changes uh Yasuo, Yasuo overly benefited from the blade of the ring king changes last patch as we said you guys might remember we talked about it in the last patch and then talked about it in like solo queue picks and also in the review of the patch Yasuo was a menace this patch because he he got buffed a couple of patches ago and also got a, a massive benefit from the blade of the ring king changes um so Yasuo's base armor and base health is being reduced and his base health is not being reduced by a small amount that's an 80 base health nerf that's over 10 percent that's like sorry not yeah it is over 10 percent. what am i talking about yeah of course it is it's about like what like 12 or 13 percent here so that's a pretty significant base health nerf um in fact i think it's just a 15 percent i might what am i am i talking rubbish i have no idea it's about 14 or 15 percent um and so He's getting a pretty significant nerf to his base armor and his base health, which is was going to make him squishy in lane. So if you manage to proc that shield, he'll take more damage. And his sweeping blade dash speed is being cut by 25%. So he's going to move through minions much less quickly when he's using his sweeping dash, which is going to make, which is going to make him easier to hit with abilities. So he's not going to be able to dodge out from abilities uh, much more. Uh, and essentially, he's going to match the pace of his dashing from the PC counterpart. That actually is the bigger nerf to Yasuo, in my opinion. One of the big things that made Yasuo strong was his ability to outplay using minions to dash through. And that was, you know, allowing him to avoid Oriana balls. It was allowing him to avoid Corky uh, Qs. Basically, it was allowing him to avoid a significant amount of damage by having a very quick dash speed. Well, this is cutting it by 25%, which is a pretty nutty. Gives you more time to react to Yasuo and less time for him to be able to react to the way that you're... Um, the way that you can pressure him with ranged abilities so that's this is actually some pretty big uh like honestly some pretty big uh nerfs to yasuo um and you know it's going to be one of those situations where i think a lot of yasuo players are going to have to start kind of relearn how easy it is to dash and kind of what what pace you can set with the dashing uh i would say these are pretty significant nerfs to yasuo though and i think he's going to suffer for it especially uh so all you yasuo one tricks this is not the kind of news i think you were hoping for um, and Ziggs, Ziggs is, the, this is, Ziggs is the last person to get changes. We only had changes to five champions on 2.1b. Um, essentially, Ziggs is getting a buff to his ultimate. So they're going to increase the outer AoE size radius by 20% and the inner AoE side radius by 20%. So he's basically getting a 20% range increase on his um, ultimate or 20% radius increase on his ultimate. And then the satchel charge is just having, basically its ability to execute towers lowered by 5%. Because in competitive, you saw Ziggs very easily able. I've just realized this whole video that my face has been behind the microphone, and I'm so sorry for that. <laughs> it's just because of the way I'm set up in this office. I, I can't do much about it. Um, in competitive, he, he, he struggled. Uh, oh, sorry, in competitive, he was really good at taking towers, so maybe it's going to cut it down a little bit. Um, Broadcast announcement. I'm really upset that they did not nerf Oriana. <laughs> yeah, they didn't nerf Oriana again. Um, she's probably going to remain the, the S tier pick in the mid lane. She's still super strong. Uh, who else? I don't really think there was anything that like glaringly, obviously, like that needed nerfing apart from maybe Oriana. Um, but I'm guessing the stats just show that Oriana has a very, very like standard uh, win rate. I suppose but in, in high elo she's super dominant i think so yeah Ar ariana was the only like problem child for me 
uh, in terms of uh, in terms of who was super strong. The other person was Alistair. Even though I'm a support main, I would have loved to have seen a nerf to Alistair. I really think his his ultimate does too much damage reduction in the early game, and I think this is going to mean that Alistair still remains like one of the S tier supports. But I'm guessing that they're waiting for the Leona release and see if that kind of impacts the way that Alistair's played out. Um, but I do think that Alistair's still super strong. So Alistair and Le Oriana, I think, deserved some looking at. Um, but they're not. So Alistair will remain a very strong support. And I think Oriana will still remain one of the queens of the mid lane. Um, okay, so we have some pretty insane item changes here. Um, the first which, well, there's only one, but it is still insane. It's Locket. Uh, Locket is having its price increased by 300 gold. And the shield amount is going down by half in the early game. So level one, basically, half. Um which is going to scale up to being um, similar in the late game or the same in the late game. But the, the 300 gold price in increase is pretty significant because that's going to mean that it's a little bit harder to achieve that before first dragon, which might now mean that supports go redemption and junglers go lock it. Um, so it might change the meta that supports end up going redemption now because it's easier to get before the first Drake fight and then the junglers go lock it. Um, especially because junglers generally tend to get more levels uh, in as or, or more levels quickly than supports. But that's that's a pretty big nerf to supports in general in terms of their, their, their item build paths. And I think you probably just switched the redemption to supports now and the locket over to the junglers. Which I don't like because I felt like I had more agency with locket than I did with redemption, but it is what it is. Um, Conqueror is getting nerfed. So AP, so basically AP per stack is being reduced by 25% across the board. So the AP benefit of Conqueror is being reduced, which is interesting because you didn't tend to see Conqueror on the PC version on the on many AP champions because we had more options as AP champions. Uh, like we had um we had the uh, what's it called Comet as well. You know we had Comet, we have Phase Rush and lots of other things we could consider. But Conqueror is being nerfed, which might mean that Electrocute and Summon Area more used more frequently for a lot of AP champions. Um, and also the maximum adaptive damage bonus is being reduced to seven percent on range champions. So range champions in general, including AD carries, are now going to feel a pretty significant nerf uh, when it comes to the Conqueror stacks that you can build up. So this will nerf AD carries in general, but it'll also nerf ranged. It will nerf ranged AP champions like Oriana and Aurelian Soul pretty significantly. So the, that that rune that you'd often see like Aurelian Souls and Oriana's pickup um, is getting hit. So maybe this is one of the reasons. I actually didn't read this bit about the Oriana. Maybe this is one of the reasons they didn't want to touch Oriana just in case this had much more of a bigger uh, knock on. But um, it's also going to affect Kennen, which is one of the better runes that he went for as well. So yeah, I think um, I think this is a pretty significant nerf to Conqueror. The the only thing that I would say is there is even if it's a significant nerf to Conqueror, especially for ranged AP champions, it, are there many other like, are there many better options? Like for Kennen, yeah, okay, Electrocute can work well in lane, but Conqueror is still going to be the best choice in team fights, right? And the same with Oriana, like Electrocute will work well in lane, but it might just be better to go for for Conqueror for the team fight situations, as well as Aurelian Soul. You know, Aurelian Soul is looking to have sustained team fights, and Conqueror is still just the best option for that. It's just not going to be as powerful as a rune now. And I don't, you know, I think this might change up some rune build paths. Like I, I as an Oriana, I now might might be more. Cool, um, more uh interested in going something like a electrocute this also affects corky as well like it's a pretty significant change to corky i think i think um conqueror was just the best rune for corky overall i did i don't think corky's got many other good runes i mean fleet footwork can work but um i think conqueror is just best for his damage output so this is going to definitely nerf a lot of the ranged ap champions that were were super strong in the meta so like you know corky oriana aurelian soul aurelian soul's kind of getting a double nerf out of this as well so these are uh, pretty beefy nerfs to the damage output for ranged AP champions. Okay, so we've got some system changes. Um, so the backdoor bonus. What the backdoor bonus is, um, is when there were no minions in the vicinity of the Nexus, the, the, um, the, the Nexus would have a 66% damage reduction, so it would be harder to, to kill it. And that would drop to 33% at 18 minutes. They're actually just making that 66% through it the whole game. So it's going to make it a little bit harder to just straight up backdoor. So uh, that's really one of those things that I think is mostly going to apply to competitive. But, you know, just be aware that if you are looking for a, a backdoor attempt in solo queue, it is going to be significantly harder all the way through the game now to do that. Uh, and lane swaps. This is not something that you really ever saw um in solo cube so this is probably not something that's going to affect you in solo cube but if you're interested in esports and competitive this will uh, be of major interest to you because this is something that happened in the pc league variant when we had the lane swap meta which was like season four or season three or something like that um 
So what they are doing is instead of basically what what happened on the patch before this was that all turret all turrets had fifty percent or sorry fifty bonus magic and armor resist um, in the first three minutes, and in those first three minutes um, they would gain extra bonuses for the champions that are near them, giving them a maximum of one hundred and seventy armor and magic resist for a five man stack on a tower. So it's supposed to like dissuade you taking towers super super early. Now uh, for the first three minutes. Um, all uh the the, the, sort of the the armor and magic resist is going to change so mid and baron lane are getting 90 armor and bonus and magic resist and the duo dragon lane is going to have a reduction so it's trying to encourage the 2v2 lanes to go bot where the tower is going to be easier to take then uh during the first three minutes turrets gain additional defensive bonuses when multiple animals enemies are nearby so if you're two champions you're going to get a 10 bonus armor and magic resist which will make the bot lane tower similar to, or exact, exactly the same as it was before. If there are three champions, it's 100. Four champions, 200. And th uh, five champions, 300. Which means you can no longer just stack four champions in a lane and take a tower super easily in the early game. And that first three minutes is relatively significant because if you choose to then stay beyond three minutes uh, and push the tower, then it may be a situation where you have to end up giving up Drake for the tower rather than, you know, rather than... Um, being able to just push the tower down easily and also gives the enemy team more time to react within the first three minutes as well. So essentially it's trying to dissuade early lane swaps and it's going to make it much harder to take uh, towers in the other lanes if a lane swap is initiated. It's trying to encourage the 2v2 to stay bot lane because it's more interesting to see a 2v2 play out than it is to see a 2v1 play out, which I think is, I think I actually think is a pretty good decision overall, especially for, for viewership and, viewer, and you know viewer experience. Viewers Unless you're really interested in the macro analysis of a uh, of a lane swap, most viewers are mostly interested in just seeing how two v two matchups play out. Because I, I actually personally think it's more interesting as well. And they're also just basically saying they're rolling out better chat evaluation for other languages. So in case you're getting absolutely flamed in another language, you're going to be slightly better off. And that is everything. That is the patch. I hope you enjoyed the patch 2.1b rundown, and I'll see you on the Summoner's Rift very soon.